This question is about electrolysis. Molten sodium chloride is electrolyzed in an industrial process to produce sodium. The figure below shows a simplified version of the electrolysis cell used. And you can see we have the sodium chloride in its molten state, that means NaCl liquid. And so we're carrying out electrolysis, which means we're working with ionic compounds. And when molten, the sodium chloride liquid splits into sodium ions and chloride ions, which are free to move. We can see that there are positive and negative electrodes in these positions and the molten sodium is piped off at the top here and chlorine gas on the left hand side here. And we've been asked which is the correct half equation for the production of sodium. Now, before we answer this question, we need to remind ourselves that during electrolysis, the ions are attracted to the oppositely charged electrode and then they move towards it and become discharged. And by discharged, we mean the ions lose their charge, typically turning into elements. And how they do this depends on the charge of the ion. If they are a negative ion, they will lose electrons and become oxidized. Or if they are positive ions, they will gain electrons and be reduced. Half equations show half of the picture, either the oxidation or the reduction. And so in terms of seeing which of these is correct, we can actually rule out the first two because they are starting with neutral elements and we are producing ions. And that's the opposite of what should be happening. You can see that in the final two, we start with ions and we finish with neutral element, sodium. So the bottom two look pretty good but one of them is wrong. And the one that is wrong is the one that shows a positive sodium ion losing electrons to become neutral. That's not how it happens. What needs to happen is sodium loses its positive charge by gaining negative electrons and becoming the element sodium. And so the third one here is correct. A mesh is used to keep the products of the electrolysis apart suggest one reason why the products of electrolysis must be kept apart. Well, the products of electrolysis are molten sodium, so that is Na liquid, and chlorine gas, Cl2 little g. Chlorine is a diatomic molecule. And when we're considering why these products must be kept apart, it's worth thinking about flipping that and, and thinking what would happen if they were not separated? and sodium and chlorine, if they were not separated, would actually probably react together and reform the sodium chloride in the equation that I'm showing here. 2Na plus Cl2 would react and produce 2NaCl. So we would be putting energy in to carry out this process, but this process would be reversing itself. Which type of particle passes through the mesh in the electrolysis of molten sodium chloride? Well, first of all, we know that the molten sodium can't be passing through the mesh because we're told that the mesh is keeping the products separated. And so that means sodium atoms can't pass through the mesh, so atoms can't pass through the mesh. And similarly, the chlorine gas, which is molecules, can't be passing through the mesh either, so we can rule out molecules as the option. And finally, we can discount the electrons. They are too small and too highly charged to exist by themselves, and they can typically only be shared or transferred. In the very few cases where we get delocalized electrons, this means metals and graphite and graphene, electrons can be free to move, but that's not the case when we've got molten ionic compounds, which is what we've got here. It must be the ions that are free to move through that mesh because the sodium ions need to move towards the negative electrode and the chloride ions need to move towards the positive electrode. So they all need to be able to move across that mesh. Aqueous sodium chloride solution is electrolyzed in a different industrial process. Two gases and an alkaline solution are produced. Which two ions are present in aqueous sodium chloride solution in addition to sodium ions and chloride ions? 
aqueous solutions means we've got an ionic compound which is dissolved in water. And so these additional ions come from the water. And water naturally dissociates and produces small quantities of hydrogen ions, H+, and hydroxide ions, OH-. This means that in any aqueous solution, along with the ions from the dissolved ionic compound, there are some hydrogen ions and some hydroxide ions. And so in our sodium chloride solution, we will have sodium ions and chloride ions from the sodium chloride. And in addition to this, we will have hydrogen ions, which we could write as H plus if we prefer. And we will also have hydroxide ions, or we could write OH minus. And these ions could be written in either order, one mark for each. Name the alkaline solution produced. Well, alkaline solutions typically contain the hydroxide ion, and so it's likely that this solution will be something to do with the hydroxide. But actually, part F asks us to explain how the alkaline solution is produced, referring to the processes taking place at the electrodes. So actually, let's answer this question first and then go back to E. Remember, we've got sodium ions and chloride ions, hydrogen ions and hydroxide ions. So we've got two positive ions and two negative ions. And in fact, only one positive ion will be discharged at the negative electrode and only one negative ion discharged at the positive. And you need to remember the rules for working out which ion is discharged. And at the negative electrode, the positive ion from the less reactive element is the one that is discharged. And this is because the less reactive substance forms its ions less readily by losing electrons, and therefore it will more easily gain electrons and turn back into the element. And since sodium is more reactive than hydrogen, the hydrogen ion is the ion of the less reactive element. And so that means that it will be discharged at the negative electrode by gaining electrons and being reduced. And the equation for this is shown here. It's not essential for this first mark. 2H plus gains two electrons and becomes H2. And so we'd see bubbling at the negative electrode. And then for the second mark, we need to consider the negative ion. The rule here is that if we have a negative halide ion, then we will get a halogen produced at the positive electrode. And if we didn't, we would get oxygen being produced. But we do have a halide ion here, so it will be the chloride ion that moves across to the positive electrode where it will lose its electrons and it will be oxidized, which means that the chloride ions are discharged and chlorine is produced. And so the equation for this, the half equation for this, is 2Cl minus turns into Cl2 plus two electrons. And so you can see we've got a neutral diatomic molecule of chlorine produced at the positive electrode. And again, we would see bubbling. And then finally, the sodium ions, Na plus, and the hydroxide ions, OH minus, are left behind in solution and they are not discharged. And that's actually what we need to say for the third mark for explaining the formation of the alkaline solution. But then if we go back to E, we can see that this alkaline solution must be NaOH, or in other words, to name it, it must be sodium hydroxide. And so we would get one mark for E for naming sodium hydroxide and three marks for F for explaining how this sodium hydroxide solution was produced. One mark for each of my three bullet points that I'm showing separated out here.